Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So some pictures of Ben Affleck's Batmobile just dropped. The kid that took them even took some pictures with himself in the cockpit. So let's take a look and see what we all think. As you can see, it looks pretty hardcore, but I think it says a lot about what Batman is going to be doing in this next film. By the way, if you're just finding me for the first time, I do DC movie and TV videos every week. So be sure to subscribe to get everything because there's a bunch of stuff coming this fall. Don't you just feel like this new Batmobile still has a lot of the Christopher Nolan Tumblr DNA in it? I'm starting to think that it looks a lot like the Batmobile from the Arkham Knight game, the one that's coming out next year. You know, slightly less fortified than the tank, but much more aggressive and agile. The story of Batman versus Superman supposedly takes a lot from the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns story. So not going with the old school bat tank is a big departure, but this feels much more modern. Like it feels much more practical. The culture today is all about shrinking cars down. Frank Miller's version was designed for all out open war. This one seems much more like a knife and the fact that it's designed to turn around corners. One of the big problems with Christopher Nolan's Tumblr was that it had a really hard time with corners just because of those massive tires. But going back even further, does anyone remember the Michael Keaton Batmobile, the Tim Burton one from Batman Returns? They actually had to use a grappling hook to swing that around corners. I love how some of those movies just throw physics out the window. That's why Christopher Nolan designed his to be much more practical, the Tumblr. Zack Snyder's obviously continuing on that theme, so this car actually looks like something you might run into in a street show. Don't you just wonder if after this movie's over, Ben Affleck is going to ask Jennifer Garner for permission to buy a custom Batmobile just to keep in his own garage. I would be willing to bet that this car might even be street legal. One of the few Batmobiles, including Adam West's Batmobile, that could make that claim. Just for fun though, let's actually take a look at all the different Batmobiles, all the most popular ones. If you count like literally everything, all the comics, all the media, the video games, there have been almost 300 different versions of the Batmobile. I guess it really doesn't matter when you're a billionaire. You can have as many cars as you want though. So here's all the major versions, starting with the first one. It was a red sedan. It was just called his car. There wasn't anything special about it. It was just a regular car. It debuted in Detective Comics number 27. They didn't start calling it the Batmobile till issue 48. In issue 30 though, they upgraded the engine, but it wasn't until Batman number 5, a separate comic, in 1941 that they made the body much sleeker, darken the color, and added the bat hood ornament and a fin. The funny thing about that is, is that three pages after it debuted, the Joker forced it off a cliff, but it was totally back in the next issue. I think there was a joke in the Tim Burton Batman about Bruce Wayne having more cars than he knew what to do with. But then in 1944, the Batmobile was featured on the cover of a comic for the first time. It was Batman number 20. This design was so popular that it basically became the default Batmobile for the rest of the 1940s. Every once in a while there'll be a Batmobile that's so popular that it would bleed from TV into the comics. Usually it's the other way around. Next, of course, came the very famous 1965 Adam West version. It was made by George Barris from a Ford Futura, which was a failed concept car. They just never put it into production. He modified it to give it a lot of the Bat features, but a lot of the base design of the Batmobile was already in that concept car. Later, during the 1973 Super Friends cartoon, they introduced a modified version of that Adam West car. They basically straightened the lines, changed the hood, and added the bat decals on the doors. It was the first car to feature the yellow Batman symbol on the car. Then, of course, came the Frank Miller full-on assault tank in the 1985 Dark Knight Returns book. In terms of size, this is the largest Batmobile ever. It takes up three car lanes. The joke that he makes in the story that Batman makes is that only something not from this planet can damage it. Of course, talking about Superman. Then in 1989 came the Tim Burton design, which lasted through both of his films and also kind of influenced a lot of later designs. The body was a complete custom fab built on top of a Chevy V8. They made some major modifications like adding the jet turbine to the design, but they did keep a lot of the 1930s influence with the big tail fins. If you remember the 1989 Batman series that came after, their Batmobile took a lot of Tim Burton's design and incorporated a lot of others. The animation made it a lot easier for them to fudge the laws of physics, so they were able to combine a lot of different elements from previous Batmobiles in the concept, like the idea of jet turbines and turning corners really fast. Then in 1995, Batman Forever modified the Tim Burton design just to make it look like it actually had ribs, more like an actual bat. They made the cockpit smaller, added highlights, and a lot more gadgetry, and a much larger fin. This was basically the beginning of the Joel Schumacher era. Then a couple years later in the Batman and Robin movie, they pushed the cockpit back even further, accentuated the grill, and added lights to basically everything. Almost everything on the car lit up. Supposedly they wanted the car to feel like it had this larger than life presence whenever it was on screen. Like it was an actual character in the movie. If you guys want to have some fun and blow some time, listen to the commentary track on Batman and Robin. Joel Schumacher basically spends the entire movie apologizing. 
Then in 1995, whenever they started the new animated series, they completely redid the car to make it just way simpler. That series only ran until 1999, but the design of that car was used in the comics, so it was actually really, really popular. So now we move into the modern Batman era, where everything is like post-superhero. So this is like stuff that you might actually find in the real world. In 2005, eight years after Batman and Robin, Christopher Nolan introduced the Tumblr, a modified army vehicle made to jump canyons and lay bridges. They made a bunch of modifications to it across the Dark Knight trilogy, like giving it remote control features and adding the Batpod motorcycle. But all in all, this became like the most popular Batmobile ever. Not necessarily the most iconic, but probably, at least in the last 10 years, the most popular design. So then we move into the Arkham games, which are actually starting to make more money than the movies. The first Arkham Asylum game in 2009 introduced a slightly modified Tim Burton Batmobile. It wasn't too crazy with gadgetry and weapons, it was just a really classic design. The most recent Batmobile to be seen, not including Zack Snyder's, is during the Arkham Knight game. It's not going to be released till 2015, but as you can see, the design combines a lot of the urban maneuvering features with the assault weaponry of the tank from Frank Miller's 1985 comic. Right now, I still totally love the Tumblr, but my favorite Batmobile is probably going to be the one from Arkham Knight next year, the one from the new game. My favorite animated one is still from Batman the Animated Series. But now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite Batmobile? Like I said, there's almost 300. It's almost like Batman has a 3D printer and he just prints cars out every year. On a related note, don't you think it's interesting that Stephen Amell doesn't have a green arrow car on arrow on that show? I'm totally glad. I don't think it would work with the tone of the show and the look they're going for. He does have a pretty sweet motorcycle though. I would actually like to see them do a joke about Felicity's van being their official team arrow car, just like their big cargo van. During season two, she ran over Summer Glow in it. Wouldn't it be great if they just never fixed the dent that she left and anytime someone made fun of her, everyone just looked at the dent and got really quiet? I just like the idea that Felicity might threaten someone with running them over with the van. Right now on Batman vs Superman, they still got a bunch of filming left to do, but there are more and more pictures posting from behind the scenes. There was an image of Jesse Eisenberg with this weird Lex Luthor hair. It's not guaranteed or anything, but it might be what he looks like during the film. Jason Momoa has pretty much all but confirmed he's playing Aquaman 2. I don't think I did a video about it, but Zack Snyder basically called into a radio station defending the idea of Aquaman. He wasn't confirming the character was in the movie or anything, but later Jason Momoa would not stop talking about how excited he was for the movie during interviews. So do not be surprised if Jason Momoa shows up in the movie. I mean, it's probably a really small part, but it is like the worst kept secret. I haven't really enjoyed his leading roles quite as much, you know, like Conan, but I think he can do really well in an ensemble. So right now I am working on an Avengers 3 Guardians of the Galaxy video for tonight. Supposedly there's some really interesting contract renegotiations going on behind the scenes with Dave Bautista's Drax character. So I'll explain what's going on with that. So be sure to subscribe to get it. Also add an annotation right here whenever I post it. That'll probably be tonight. And you can click here to learn about all the fall TV shows and movies and stuff that I'm doing. I just posted a huge fall channel trailer. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.